health care reform. And of course, uh, we tried to reform health care, uh, and we now have the Affordable Care Act. And I think it does respond to what I would say are the key reform principles we need to look at in this country uh, to improve our health care system. Um, you don't have to agree with these grades. I put them in here to tell you my own view and to be a little bit provocative. We do have much more coverage under ACA than we used to, but there's still some groups left out. You could say we've done pretty well there. Maybe this is a B plus, A minus. Uh, we have guaranteed access. In other words, you can't deny someone health care uh, because of a pre-existing condition. Uh, the two first principles here are dependent, however, on having an individual mandate for people to have insurance. If you don't do that, you get adverse selection. You get people only signing up for health care when they get sick. And that, of course, as you know, is under court challenge now. Looks like the Supreme Court is going to take up the issue. The lower courts have voted two to one in favor of making the individual mandate constitutional. Uh, I believe the Supreme Court will go along with that two to one. In other words, I believe they will uh, say it's constitutional as well, but no guarantees here. Uh, we do have reasonably generous subsidies that are related to income in the Affordable Care Act. You can get a subsidy up to about $88,000 for a family of four. I don't think the limits on spending were strong and uh, on, you know, cost control were strong enough. How am I doing, Leonore? Okay, I'm doing okay. <laughs> um, now, the new debate is going to be around what's called premium, premium support uh, in Medicare. You know, Paul Ryan uh, put this forward and it's being actively debated, but he, and he put forward a version of premium support that most people, including me, don't like. But the reason, uh, the main reason we don't like it is because the formula by which he indexes the increase in the value of the voucher that you would get to buy a health insurance plan is a very stingy formula. Um, my colleague, Alice Rivlin, uh, in collaboration with former Senator Pete Domenici, uh, who co-chaired another fiscal commission, they have put forward a plan that, uh, for premium support for the elderly that I think actually has merit. Uh, but what it does is it has a much more generous indexing formula, and it also gives people the option of staying in traditional Medicare, but it creates more competition uh, between uh, the regular Medicare program and other health plans that could come into the system be sold on a regulated exchange and create more options for people. Similarly, at the non-elderly level, I think we should have a public option uh, and we should have regulated exchanges. And then if we did both, we could put the whole system into one integrated whole. It does not make sense to have one health care system for the elderly and another healthcare system for the non-elderly. Other countries don't do that. Other countries spend much, much less than we do on healthcare and don't get worse results. Um, for those of you who want to read a really good book on this topic, uh, there's one by a guy named T.R. Reed, R-E-I-D, and it's in paperback now. It's a short, easy read and very, very educational.